Happy Halloween, folks. Don't mind the Yoshi costume because, well, this is what I'm dressed as this year. Got my shell, got shirt, and Yoshi's decapitated head. I'm just kidding there, folks. I didn't decapitate a Yoshi. No Yoshis were harmed. Okay, so now that it's Halloween time, and unfortunately, so tomorrow's gonna be November. So, we're gonna be going over. You guessed it, another episode of the discussion. Yay, two in one week. What is this? Christmas? I'm just kidding. I, I mean, I wish it was Christmas, but. Well, doesn't matter though. Today we're gonna be going over. Goosebumps. Goosebumps is pretty much a show that started all the way around 1995, all the way until 1998 when they stopped airing episodes. In this video, we're going to be going over three random episodes that I chose, and also going over why Goosebumps was, at the time, an iconic series, and why now it's like, still an iconic series, but like, meh. So without further ado, let us jump in. Alright then, so, how did Goosebumps come to be? Well, the creator, R.L. Stein, pretty much started writing books around the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, and then eventually he started writing a series that he called Goosebumps, er, Tales to Give You Goosebumps. And then, eventually, he started writing even more novels, like a set of maybe around, uh, something around 40, 50, 60, some books, and, because R.L. Stein has a lot of books, and, well, I mean, there are exact ways to know how many, because there's different series, like Series 2000, um, the Choose Your Own Adventure ones, yeah, there are actually Choose Your Own Adventure ones. Horrorland, classic series, and then the classic series, but except for revamped, new versions of the books, spin-offs, sequels, um, part twos, threes, fours, and a bunch, like, a bunch of books, really, like, a bunch of horror novels, so shout out to anyone who can actually guess, like, how many there are in total of all the Goosebumps books that he's written so far. Anyway, though... Arl Stein pretty much started with something small that became something so big, and people liked it. People saw it as amazing. I'm going to choose ones that are going to be thrown at me by three random choices that I put on a wheel. So after a little bit of time, and by that I mean like less than ten minutes, I came up with three. Say Cheese and Die, Night of the Living Dummy 2, and, drumroll please, Calling All Creeps. Yeah, I don't know if I got a good pick or bad pick, but it's anyone's opinion or guess. So without further ado, let's get over those three episodes in order of what I just said now. Okay then, so you're probably wondering what exactly is so good or bad about these episodes. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't know, but we have to go over the episode in order to actually understand it. So, the first thing on our list is Say Cheese and Die, an episode that's basically about two kids and a Ryan Gosling who basically find the camera by this strange weirdo's house. Eventually, they find the camera and they mess around with it. Unfortunately, though, 
they take a picture of one of their friends, and then sooner or later, he accidentally falls on the staircase and kind of hurts himself. But he's okay, he's not dead. However, though, when they look at the picture that they took on the camera, because he was juggling at that time, it showed the minute that he fell off it. It didn't show him juggling like before. The next thing afterwards would essentially be him taking a picture of his brother's car. Well, his brother and then their new car. However, though, it would show the car being damaged and totaled. Of course, there's the book adaptations, which you're probably wondering about. No, I don't read books, because books are for nerds. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But book adaptations don't count. We're only going over the TV shows anyway. So back to the episode. Eventually, they go out driving one night on the car, and then they almost get into a car crash. Almost. The next day, however, soon they realize that he, their father, got in a car crash. But that's pretty much, oh no, my bucket, no, my bucket, ignore that. But, essentially, they meet up with one of their friends, some girl, forgot her name, and sooner or later, he takes a picture of her, and then there's nobody there. So she's pretty much disappeared from the photo. And then, lo and behold, later on that same night, they, he gets the police over to his house, and pretty much they're not there, gone. And they question him about it. They show him, He shows them the photo, and they don't believe him at all. So eventually, after a few days of her going missing, he tears up the photo, and then she comes back. And then they decide to return the camera, because, well, it's evil, so why wouldn't you? So... Basically, they return the camera, and then they got stopped by the guy named Spidey, who kind of co-founded the camera, because his assistant, who actually made the camera, didn't get credit for it, so he put a curse on it. So, and then he tries to capture them, because they can't tell anyone else about this. And soon enough, he gets captured and put in the camera. Then they leave, and then the bullies, which I didn't mention for... You know, because they aren't relevant to the plot. They come, they steal the camera, and then they release him. And, well, that's how the episode ends. Overall, 7 out of 10. Not really scary, mostly just because... And... It's just not scary. I don't know. I mean, sure, it, he takes a picture of them at a barbecue... And they're pretty much all skeletons, but that's really the only scary or spooky part. So, uh, yeah, 7 out of 10. On to the next episode, which is a lot more scarier. And you probably may or may not know this episode. So let us jump into Night of the Living Dummy 2. Night of the Living Dummy 2 is, oh boy, a good episode. Night of the Living Dummy 2 begins with a family. They introduce the family, and after the introduction, it reveals that one of their kids is a puppeteer. I think that's the right term. Probably not. I don't know. But they pretty much like to use puppets as like an act. And fortunately, it's falling apart. So, the father decided to get them a new dummy that's called Slappy that he apparently found by like a store window so essentially she takes the camera out of its pocket and starts reading some random words <sighs> the one thing you don't do in the horror movies or any horror type of video or content is to ever read words that you don't know especially if it's in German or like it's spelled or written weird you never read stuff like that because otherwise you might bring upon a curse or a ghost or a demon or even Fortnite. but nonetheless though is that she hugs the dummy slappy and pretty much he gives an evil look and that was the first thing that actually startled me back when i watched this episode the first time Eventually, she puts the dummy on next to her other dummy, the old one, Dennis, that's his name. And the next morning, they find that the artist, the oldest sister, 
pretty much her painting got ruined and she is she Amy I believe that's her name Amy gets blamed for it when in reality she didn't but she finds paint on Slappy's hands later on the next thing to happen is I believe like she brings the dummy to her family show thingy and um, Slappy starts hurling insults at the whole family and they kind of get mad at her for it but Amy's not the one to blame here it's Slappy I'm surprised they don't actually notice the voice change like because when Amy is using Slappy for the first time it's not you can hear the voice difference but when you hear Slappy for the first time it's like more different so I'm surprised they don't notice that but this is goosebumps nothing really ever makes sense like logic is just thrown out the window eventually later on her friends come over and lo and behold they she like throws the dummy into like a box however the friend of hers because the friend has a sister the sister goes into the closet when like Amy is distracted and finds Slappy and Slappy hurts her and she's blamed for it thinking it was a prank on her sister and sh her friendship with her friend and sister are no longer there and pretty much she's blamed for it because she threw Slappy on the bed and then as soon as she turns around he stands back up. Now that's freaky. Then next night or I believe that night pretty much she has to save her parents from Slappy, who pretty much uses a guitar to nearly bash them. But of course, she gets blamed again and punished. Soon enough, she throws Slappy in a gutter and thinking all her problems are away. Soon enough, though, however, that same day, I believe, she pretty much ends up seeing that doll again in her room. And the doll telling her, or Slappy, calling her a slave and that... Her family will be hers and that she's seen as crazy and that she'll he'll take over all of them and then her sister eventually finds this out too and then they go into a little chase scene. fast forward a bit slappy nearly um enslaves amy i guess i didn't really see much of the threat there he was just on top of a table and he gets smashed onto uh the fireplace by dennis and they think that it was his brother because they have a brother i forgot to mention that that the brother, like, used Dennis to distract him. However, though, Slappy's soul is broken, so he's not alive anymore, thank God. But they all huddle around the staircase, and the brother comes down and says, Wait, what did I do this time? And then they're like, Wait, if you were upstairs, then how? And they look, and Dennis is standing on the table, laughing. <laughs> It's good to be back in the family again. Oh, oh, oh. And then laughs maniacally as everyone stares in horror. And then the episode ends there. Truly a scary episode because Slappy is actually one of the more scarier monsters, if not enemies of Goosebumps, that many people would say are honestly scary. Apart from the intro from the Goosebumps because the Goosebumps intro used to actually startle me. Moving on, though, the last episode is Calling All Creeps. Aw, oh, man. Alright, I'm just checking just in case there's candy in there. Anyway, though, Calling All Creeps is another good episode. So basically, it starts off with this kid who's seen as like a rat or something. I don't even... Ricky, I believe. Ricky the Rat, because that's his nickname throughout the episode. Get used to it, but I'm not going to be using it. So eventually, he tries to prank this girl that he doesn't like by putting Calling All Creeps, this weird ad, and then putting a, I believe, her phone number. However, though, he almost gets caught, and then eventually he escapes out. At school, though, he's bullied and, well, just kind of keeps to himself, getting bullied by these three kids. Eventually, though, I believe the next day or so, he starts getting random phone calls. Soon enough, he starts ignoring those phone calls, and the next day rolls by, and the girl that he was trying to prank pretty much tells him off, saying that, good job that you tried to prank me, but it didn't work, so good luck with your calling all creeps ad. Eventually, though, he gets enc encountered by those three kids again. And they eventually apologize to him for some odd reason. And he tells they tell him to meet him in the woods days later. Soon enough, he realizes that 
they aren't human because they are actually creeps or aliens, but technically called creeps in this episode. So it turns out they are actually creeps just set on human to human life in order to actually enslave humans and, you know, be the dominant species, you know, alien things, society. So he kind of accepts their order because they think that he's the master and they kind of apologize to him for being disrespectful to their supposed master even though he's not a creep of course because they i believe they know that but they just kind of don't care so their first order in order to enslave everybody is to put some weird stuff in the school food i mean school food it's disgusting no one well some people unfortunately have to eat it and others don't bother to make lunch so they decide, yeah, it's a good idea. So he's pressured into putting some stuff in the food so that that way he can, you know, get the first step rolling with enslaving the earth and getting revenge. And then eventually he almost gets caught. Soon enough, he leaves. And then their next order of business is a bake sale because they realize that maybe it's not exactly going to affect anybody or nobody's going to eat it. Or they probably threw out the food. I forgot I, when I was watching the episode. I was kind of distracted. Anyway, though, soon enough, they get to a bake sale. And they decide to fill all the cookies with the same ingredient I believe they used. So that that way they can turn them all into creeps. And I forgot to mention this, but he also meets this girl that he likes. And stuff happens. I don't know why. They become friends. And then she kind of tells them that you just stay away from them or something like that. And eventually they get to the bake sale. He goes up to make an announcement because um, he everyone's already grabbed the cookies that he supposedly made. And they're almost all digging into them. And he tries to go up stage and tells them that this is not okay. Even the girl um, tells him to like speak up. And they're all taunting and saying, Ricky the rat, Ricky the rat, Ricky the rat. And he's pretty much like, uh, and then they're like, do it, do it. So that they can all be your slaves and that you will be the leader of them. And the other girl's like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And he's like, enjoy your cookies. And they all bite into the cookies. And eventually you can see in one shot later that in the reflection of his glasses, they've all turned into creeps now. They're all masters to him. Saying, master, bow down to Ricky, master Ricky, stuff like that. And she is like, no, why? What are we going to do now? And she's like, I, I don't remember what he said, but, but I believe it's something on the long lines of, if you can't beat him, join him. And then the episode ends there. So pretty much everyone turned into a creep. Good job, Goosebumps. Good job. You, you really went there. You really did. I won't lie, though, this episode was pretty weird in the sense that it just turns from, like, some prank gone wrong, which is pretty much exactly what it is. But it ends up with pretty much the person getting bullied, eventually getting revenge, except on everyone, and now being their masters and them making fun of him all being slaves. So it's, it's like that meme where it's like, don't make fun of um, people in high school. Something like that. It's a meme like that. I don't know. I tried... Didn't work. Anyway, though, that's all the episode. So now I'm going to be wrapping this up. So what did we learn today, folks? We learned to never own a dummy, never steal, and um, don't try to prank people because it can always backfire and the alien population could, like, grow and take over mankind. But that's just Goosebumps because Goosebumps is just an abstract series about Reality and fiction, dreams, monsters, nightmares, literal phrases like go eat worms, and a bunch of other phobias and stuff, mostly preying on phobias. So that's exactly what Goosebumps is. But it's a good series. And saying that, when they made movies of it, like the first one, it was decent, I guess. And then the second one... Mm, no, I don't. I don't see the purpose of it. Like everyone, like the mom's okay with like Slappy being there. I don't. Don't find it believable in one sense. Arl Stein, or at least the Arl Stein portrayed in the movie, doesn't even help at all. He just shows up for a quick cameo. Doesn't even do anything in the second one. 
So, yeah, um, pretty much it. Movies, nope, don't recommend them. TV show, yes, even if it's bad quality and even if it's not scary. But back then, though, this was the 1990s. We didn't live in an era where everyone had to depend on jump scares for everything, like FNAF and most horror movies. So, but, you know, we live in an era, and every things change. Things change. Maybe they'll revamp Goosebumps every one year. Maybe they won't. Schoolastic, please remake the Goosebumps series. But in all seriousness, though, thank you so much for watching this. Happy Halloween, and stay Yoshi. I'm just kidding. Um, check your candy, because, you know, stuff could happen. Anyway, goodbye.